Hello, everyone. Welcome to Behind the Helm. If you want to check out this show live, make sure you go to Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch every Thursday at 4 p.m. If you want to watch the show afterwards, you can go to YouTube. We'll have our regular show plus bonus content. If you want to listen to the show in your car, maybe in the shower, maybe while you're just chilling doing a workout, head over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you could find a podcast and search up Behind the Helm. Enjoy the show. Episode 38, welcome to Behind the Helm. I'm Petty Officer Levesque. With me is Chief Dowden. And, uh, you know, if this is your first time here, welcome. It's about time. This is your 38th time. Fields, say what's up to everyone in the chat. He And by the way, mm-hmm. by the way, uh, well, I was looking at it last night because I was, I think I mentioned a little bit last week that I was going to have um, like moderators. Yeah. The people who were like in there like, hey, this is wrong. Or, you know, some people act crazy in streams. All right, so you need you need someone in there to to tone things down, right? Okay. Um, he is the only one who is a top fan. My mom? No, she no longer has it. Oh, it fell off. It yeah. fell off. It's now. Ooh. It's now. Uh oh. It's now. Uh, She's watching right now. Yeah. So oops. Um, so yeah, welcome to the behind the helm. Um, if you're watching the show now, congratulations. You already knew what was up. You can find us live Thursdays at 4 p.m. Um, check us out on YouTube. Uh, and now, officially on Twitch. Yeah, you can see it. The, the border has changed a little bit, changing things up all the time. We're always looking to improve. Uh, we'll be on YouTube live hopefully soon. We're working that yeah. out right now. Uh, Twitch, always going to be on Facebook. Always watch it later. And then, of course, the audio versions that will come out. Uh, I was checking. We were talking about it uh, because we found out it's on other places. I mean, yes, we always say Apple Podcast and Spotify, but it's also on, I I don't know who (laughs) uses it, but Google Podcast. And I do use Audible for books, but they have podcasts and we're on Audible. So literally anywhere uh, you can find podcasts, you can find us. Just type in the search behind the helm and look for our awesome logo, as you see on the bottom of the center (laughs) screen, right? (laughs) there yeah down there yeah down there you see so see all the logos uh, type it in changes 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 always trying to get the uh, information out (laughs) your mom on here said yes i missed a few dang it (laughs) i will get my top fan back dang it i don't know it's fields Fields. i don't know that's a that's tough competition with fields i'm sure there's room for another top fan though absolutely absolutely so uh today we're gonna be talking about something um I don't want to say rare because it can. It it happens to a few sailors mm-hmm. um, out there. Um, but talking about getting stationed overseas. Yeah, we've talked about port visits. Talk we've about- talked about visiting other countries. Uh, oops, I just hit my mic. We've also uh, watched a video about um, different ports. Like you can be stationed overseas. We haven't directly only talked about, hey, being stationed overseas. What does that look like? What is the change? Um, You know, how how does life work with that? So we're going to do that this week, and I think it'll be some interesting information. So to uh, to help us with that, we actually have a a special guest with us, and we're going to go ahead and bring him on here. Yeah, and just a little bit about him before we bring him on, we'll have him introduce himself too. Uh, You know, uh, everybody knows I work with Future Sailors and uh, out of the, you, you bring him in. Uh, out of the Indy North location, he was one of my future sailors and is now on to do great things. Says live video was interrupted. It's fine. It's on. It's still working on Twitch. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Man, we're we're figuring stuff out. You know, make sure everything's cool. But uh, he was one of my future sailors and uh, is back doing doing some rap duty stuff. Been working with me this week. So again, this is uh, Airman Haggerty. Can you hear us? Go ahead and make sure you're unmuted. Yeah, yeah, I can. Awesome. All right, so go ahead and introduce yourself, man. What's what's your uh, rate and where are you originally from? Uh, so I'm uh, Aiden Haggerty or AOA Haggerty. Uh, I'm an aviation ordinance man. Uh, I'm from uh, Fishers, Indiana. Uh, just got out of uh, Pensacola uh, for A and C school. And uh, yeah, I'm a... Uh, 
heading over to Yokosuka, Japan for um, duty on CBN 76, uh, the USS Ronald Reagan. Wow. So it sounds like you're a perfect person to <laughs> talk with about this. Uh, you know, you, you also, you graduated Fisher's High School, yeah? Uh, so I originally went to Fisher's, but uh, junior year, I uh, switched over to online pre-COVID and uh, it kind of just mm. worked out for me in the end. I didn't have to deal with anything crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So again, if you're from Fisher's High School or, or you remember um, Aiden, you would know him as Aiden, not just uh, Airman Haggerty. If you remember Aiden, make sure you smash that like button, share this feed. Uh, it's great information. You can see somebody else locally who's out doing something different and you can learn from it. So find it, like it, share it, follow it as always on whatever platform you are. And if you're here live, obviously you get to interact with us. So, so Haggerty, let me ask you, you know, cause we do this to everybody, you know, why, why did you join the Navy? So uh, with high school, I wasn't really a book smart kind of person. Um, and it was showing on grades. Uh, I played hockey for like 14 years of my life, uh, pre-Navy. And I really had no career plan set up. And one day my mom mentioned to me, um, I think I'm going to bring in a Navy recruiter to come talk to you. And I told her she was crazy. And uh, I actually sat on a little bit. And, um, and uh, just one night at dinner, I said, I think I want to go talk to the, the Navy recruiter tomorrow. And we went and it was just like gung ho from there. So it was never really in your plans, but just kind of how things were progressing. You were like, okay, let me think of some options here. Yeah, absolutely. Best part is, is it was his most of the time and any recruiter out here will tell you most of the time it's the parents that are like kind of the stop that put the stop on it. And like his mom was the one that's like, I'm going to bring a Navy recruiter to you, uh, which it wasn't me. It was uh, somebody else who's actually out now. It was, it was I believe it was uh, Petty Officer Roddick, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, and then uh, he was actually in the debt program for a while before I took over Indy okay. North. And, and so we didn't get to work together too awful much. Uh, and then, you know, you did your ANC school in Pensacola which is great. We, we talked about Pensacola a lot. That's any aviation rate. Speaking of aviation, uh, <laughs> Airman Haggerty brought us our homage to the Eagle today. Uh, he's, he's an AO, which is aviation ordinance man. Aviation's kind of, it's, it's part of the Navy, but it's that, that another community. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, well, when you're in aviation, you have to have the aviators. So he brought us a a nice, wonderful pair of, of aviation aviators for the, I don't think they're going to fit him though, Haggerty. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he's looking a little small, but I feel like he could grow into him. No, I mean, that works. A it bit. works. Let's, let's see. Let it hang there a little bit. Nah, okay. it'll work. Yeah, there we go. All right, all right. So yeah, absolutely. Some, some aviators now, from an now aviation. What I want is I want you to show us what we really wanted. Show, <laughs> show, show, show them what we really wanted. <laughs> okay, so... At, uh, once you graduate your A or C school um, in the ordinance uh, field in Pensacola, they have a shop that's strictly just from uh, the A school kids. So uh, this is what one of the things that you can buy there. It's only at Pensacola at the, the AO store. Um, IOS is a, a super common term that uh, every AO knows. Um, and it's used a lot. And so that I just keep up here with me all the time. But if I had another one, I promise I would have given you guys one. All right. We're going to tell, we're going to tell them what it's, what it stands for without saying it. So I is, I mean, I think he, I, at least on the carrier, I heard it. If you ain't lot. ordinance, you ain't stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Only it's not stuff. And we'll say ish. Yeah. AOs are one of the most prideful rates in the Navy. 100%. I'm surprised chief Snyder's not in here. Literally texting the muster, AOS. The musters they would have out in the hangar bay. Like whenever they're done, they're like, AOS. When hey it's man. Over, I'm like, geez, all Yo, right, guys. Have the pride. <laughs> I, I, you know what? It, we all we all cut on them. Uh, if you're not an AO, you tend to cut on AOs. But AOs have a lot of pride in what they do. And they should. I mean, you should have pride in the Navy in a whole, but they're a very prideful rate. It's like AOs so, versus BMs, who's more prideful of the rate? I, oh man, I'm not getting into that. Right. But uh FCs. Uh, so, so how was uh, A school <laughs> for you? Actually, you know what? We've talked about A school with some other kids. Let's talk about C school, right? C school is different than A school, right? C school is actually an add-on school, right? So you actually have um, training that's more of like a specialty, right? 
Yeah. So in the AO field, there's two different types. There's ship's company and squadron. So for squadron, squadron are the guys that are on the flight deck or on a, a base loading the ordnance onto the planes. And ship's company will build them, inspect them, and send them up to the, the squadron AOs on the flight deck. And I'm ship's company, so I get to, to build all the ordnance. And how different for you was A school from C school? Like, did you have the same type of freedom or was it even more, you know, freedom to, you know, go out in town, like have time to yourself? So w- with that, um, with A and C school, it was in the same building. It was in the same hangar bay in Pensacola, yeah. same barracks. So, I mean, it was just gave me more time to like be there. I was there for four months in total. And, um, all in all C school was, uh, it was all hands-on learning. There's one test right at the start and then uh, it's all hands-on. So they have a bunch of, uh, inert ordinance. And, um, yeah, with that, you just, uh, practice, um, building it and they teach you, um, how to move it around. Cause you're obviously the one moving it most of the time up the elevators, um, to the flight deck. Uh, and so you learn how to use the, the skids and all the stuff like that. Yeah. Cause I imagine the, the ordinance is pretty sensitive. I'm sure there's some things that you touch that's, you know, sensitive. If it like fell over, I imagine maybe things wouldn't go well. So we're talking ordinance too. And like, I guess we haven't like premise that. So ordinance, obviously, like we're talking about larger, larger rounds. AOs tend to uh, also on the ships, they become Sammy Smars, Marshal Ships Instructors. And, but we're talking about like um, missiles and rockets for, for the aircraft and bombs and, and um, ordinance of that nature. Correct. Uh, yeah. So it'd be anything from, you know, Mark 82 series bombs to blue 100 bombs to uh, larger missiles um, or smaller missiles like sidewinders or just stuff like that. Really anything that can go on a plane or helo is, is what we work with. What, what's your favorite bomb? Oh, you know what? Um, so actually <laughs> I knew out of everything, <laughs> everything out of everything, it has to be the, um, aim nine X is the sidewinder missile. And with that, um, on our second to last day of C school, we had, we got to take pictures with the ordinance and they actually let us, uh, throw the missiles on our shoulders for the pictures. Mm-hmm. So forever, that was probably one of the cooler things because nobody nobody can really say that they get to build ordnance, let alone carry it and, you know, be so close with it and stuff like that. So definitely the AIM-9X. <laughs> That's awesome. I know nothing. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I was going to make a joke about it. If, if you were an AO or you, you are an AO now, what's your favorite ordinance? Yeah, uh, we won't know what it means, but we'd like to hear it. I know. I think I saw Chief Snyder is watching, so I'm sure he'll chime Hopefully in with something. he doesn't say Vegas. Ve- I was waiting for it. I was waiting. <laughs> Jaeger, Jaeger. Vegas. That's it. All right. Um, so but yeah. now you're in a big kind of like transition period, right? So you're, you're actually on your way to your, your next command, right? You should have a sponsor, correct? Correct. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, um, it's, uh, as hard as it is with the 14 hour time difference, it's really easy to keep in contact with him. Um, it lines up in the morning. Sometimes you got to wake up earlier. If you want to talk to him, sometimes mm-hmm. you got to stay up a little bit later if you want to get the information you need to get, <laughs> but yeah, it, so, um, it works out. So, um, now obviously, I mean, I, so when I had my orders mm-hmm. to go to the watch day, it was in Yakuska at the time. Oh yeah. Okay. So I had to do a, an overseas, Pack it. Yep. Um, so there's a lot usually, that goes into it. It's, usually it's not they're going to take someone like like Haggerty here, someone who's single, um, usually junior, is mm-hmm. like what they will send for their first um, first duty station. If they're if they need someone overseas, Haggerty is the well, the model of what they're looking for to go over there because. You know, the Navy moves families mm-hmm. for uh, on the Navy's dime. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's hard to get overseas orders once you've been in for a little bit because you start, you know, now you have kids, you have a wife and kids, and now there's household goods to move and stuff like that. So, And it comes down to, like, a, a lot of times, just so anybody watching knows, like, you know, we talked about with ACE school, like trying really hard to make sure, you know, you, you can have a little bit of, of say in your future, mm-hmm. uh, but they do look for volunteers too. And it, it isn't always just future 
uh, or, or single um, younger sailors. Uh, so, you know, I know people too, like you're saying, it, it is harder because there's a lot into it. I know people who have moved their families over there because they loved it. Uh, I had a friend who moved his family over there and like even, even your, you know, this is pre COVID, mm-hmm. you know, even your dogs, like you're going to bring your dogs yeah. over. You yeah. have to actually quarantine, like you could go over, but your dogs have to go to a quarantine for like two or three th- weeks, I think it was at the time, uh, before you could have your your pets. So it's a bigger burden. So they do kind of look for those volunteers. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, even me and, and Haggerty were talking about it just the other day. Um, you know, it, 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 it was actually, you wanted to go to Japan, right? It was like one of your top places that you actually that wanted was, to get stationed. And tell me what you, why, so, what you said about that. So Rota, Spain and Japan, anywhere in Japan were my two top places to go because I joined the Navy to travel. Like I'm not here to stay in the States, uh, in the United States really. I want to go out. I want to see the world while I'm a 19 year old, young, right? Like you said, no kids, no real responsibilities other than my job. So why not go out and see the world while I'm this young? And then later down the road, start getting more serious and settling down and stuff when I've already you know, used up that 19, 20 year old energy. Yeah. yeah. And I think sense. the the one term you would use when we were talking, and I've used it before, but you had said it, uh, I think it was yesterday was, uh, why would I not go live in another country on the Navy's dime? Uh, Cause they're going to move you there and bring you right. back when you're done there or whatever. So it, it's one of those lifetime opportunities. Like, could you imagine having to just move yourself to Japan? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's not, um, easy to do or knowing how you're going to get back. So I think it's awesome that you're doing that. Uh, and you know, they do look, like I said, for volunteers for overseas. Uh, if you, if you were stationed overseas, uh, what could you say about it? What would you want somebody to know about it? Make sure you tell us down below in the comments section, smash that like button, follow this page, find it, like it, share it, follow it. So now for someone who is going to go overseas like yourself, Mm -hmm. um, there's some things that I feel like need to be said, right? Okay. So you're going to be in another country, right? But you are going to be on a U.S. military base. Right. So a lot of times there's hesitancy with that, like, oh my gosh, I got to learn the culture, which you do. You should learn the culture. But everything that you have in America, you're going to have on base, Almost. Almost. Almost everything, yeah. So even with families, they have daycares. They Mm -hmm. have schools, right? They have something called the next, which, I mean, I know that we're all familiar with. So being able to buy, like, U.S. groceries. And and clothing. And clothing. Clothing's a big one because you're not – the sizing's so different overseas, but the next is carrying, you know, our – brands and our um um sizes mm-hmm. you know what i mean like uh so you have the you said the exchange in the commissary like mm-hmm. food and there is you know you're gonna have local food as well but um it's not like oh man i'm going there and i i, I have to learn japanese before i get there or i am just no you're you're gonna be on a military base and most yep. of the time around the military bases the the people who own shops and stuff in that area understand that and, and they they work hard to make sure that they can communicate because hey it's somebody else to sell their local goods to so uh, but yeah absolutely learn the culture but you are on a you are on a u.s military base so Haggerty, let me ask you like is there anything interesting that your sponsors let you know that you know maybe some questions that you had that were answered that you think are kind of interesting about this transition and my well I, I guess i'll just start with one like have you do you know if there is places you can go to learn the language? Like, do they help you so, learn the language of the country? Like, so all in all, I don't, I don't know about that specifically. I, I don't um, know how the Indoc works there. Um, mm-hmm. I have a few friends over there that made it before me. Uh, originally, I was supposed to be there by no later than January second, but my plane ticket was for the eighteenth. So I had to check into TPU uh, Puget Sound in uh, Washington. But um, yeah, I, I really have uh, not a whole lot of uh, <laughs> knowledge on the language, but I am trying to teach myself as much as I yeah. can. And I feel like that just comes with learning a new skill. I've seen a lot of stuff uh, about how uh, like learning a new skill can help yeah. you just be more productive and stuff like that. So I feel like learning a new language, especially one 
This would Denver, be uh, he was this just would like, be oh. a great cutaway if we were sponsored by Duolingo. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> Babel, <laughs> and like, um, <laughs> what's that? It's Rosetta like the Stone. Thing. It's Duolingo. Like the only thing I could think uh, of was like, man, I wish. But yeah, because he could use it. Because I will tell you, like yesterday he was in the office. I'm like, what? What do I keep hearing? He was just watching um, Karate Kid two over and over again when they go to <laughs> uh, Okinawa. That was it. I'm like, dude, that's not. All right, whatever. What, uh, <laughs> what are you most excited for about going to Japan? So obviously, besides getting to experience the fleet, which is everyone talks about it at A school. Like you just, you don't know the real Navy or the real fun in the Navy until you get to the fleet, stuff like that. Yep. Definitely the food. I love trying new foods. I've tried foods from over like hundreds of different places, India, like um, Ethiopian, uh, just really everywhere. And like Japan specifically, um, I'm really excited to try their food, especially from Japan. I heard there's like so, a lot of street a lot, lot of street, street food that. and stuff like that. And it's Japan, Japanese and Chinese food is one thing that gets very skewed here. Mm -hmm. What we know as, as Japanese and Chinese food is, is really not, it's kind of like saying Taco Bell is authentic Mexican. Like, um, so if anybody said, well, they would probably say that here in Indiana, no offense to the, to Indiana. I'm just, <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying though, it's, it is a huge difference and uh, I've heard really good things. And, uh, that is one country I haven't been to, but that was always something for me. All the countries I went to was, man, I want to, I don't want to go get the, I want to see like, what's, what's the local, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, until they bring something that's still moving. And I'm like, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. In Peru, like I in Peru, yeah. they had a, guinea pigs on a stick yeah heck yeah it was a delicacy and like when we would do stuff be, there was like a cage of guinea pigs at like this thing that we went to the pet store and they're all alive yeah. and the guy was it's like, like picking out your lobster he said, <laughs> he, said mm. <laughs> he was pointing at him I'm like <laughs> wow and it, it was all right yeah not to yeah it was okay it was okay but uh what, what are you most nervous about most nervous about i would definitely say um just ship life adapting. How long is it going to adapt? I'm not really one that takes long to adapt to new like settings or situations, but this one's, this one's pretty big. Yeah. New country, new time zone, new life, new place I'm living specifically the ship. Um, but I feel like I I'm about as prepared as I could possibly be to go there knowing I asked my sponsor specifically, obviously they hand you a list in your welcome aboard packet yeah. of stuff mm -hmm. that you like should bring, but it's very vague. So I asked him specifically what, like how many of this should I bring? Mostly referring to like civilian stuff or like gaming consoles. Cause obviously bring all your uniform items with you. So yeah. Like, yes. Civilians clothes and like gaming stuff. What, what can I and like cannot bring with me? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is probably like one of the biggest transitions. I mean, just joining the Navy was a huge transition, but this, yeah. this is something that not like many people get to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is, it is something that I think will have nerves either way, but I mean, you must be more excited than anything. Just hearing that this was one of the places you wanted to go. What oh, is it about Japan that, like, what was it about Japan? You're like, man, I hope I get to go there. So when I originally joined the Navy, um, July 20th, 2020 is when I ended up swearing in. Um, I started looking at all these different ports overseas or places where you could get stationed at overspeed, like overseas specifically for my rate. Mm -hmm. And I saw Japan. And if you search up the, the Yokosuka area, you just see like a big, picture with mount fuji in the back near the yeah. base yeah. and it's close to tokyo and japan just has some really beautiful areas um yeah like the cherry bunch blossom of the, trees and stuff yep, like that. Mm -hmm. yep specifically that so i mean there's a bunch of just like really pretty places to go i love like exploring really too i'm a pretty i feel like i'm a pretty like spontaneous adventurous kind of person so Going somewhere new, it, it's going to be really easy for me to go around and find the the coolest spots and stuff like that to go take pictures, eat, or just experience. And, and you know what's cool about it is you're not just going to like be alone either. Like this would be different. Yep. Like you were just moving by yourself and you moved into an apartment in Japan and like you had nobody. Like 
you're moving somewhere where there's going to be a bunch of people there that have never lived there before, but they're all, you know, everyone's doing the same thing. So it'll be easy to like connect with people and have more of like, um, a sense of like security with people. Like I'm not just here alone. It will help with like the homesickness for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because like having people around, you'll forget sometimes. You're like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> like I forgot I'm here. And it's nice. I mean, I think uh, I, I've talked about it with every future sailor that comes back, and not that you don't have great friends from home, mm -hmm. but you. I think we were talking with um, QM uh, as an Abbott about it. Just you realize a lot of your friends from home are friends uh, due to circumstance because mm -hmm. you're there uh, and you meet some of the most unique people in the Navy. You'll meet your best friend, your worst enemy, this, that, uh, people that you'll stay uh, in communication with. I mean, just forever. Uh, you know, so it is nice knowing like, Hey, I'm not like you're saying, I'm moving into a new culture just by myself. There are, uh, you know, other, obviously a lot of uh, other sailors there, yep. Marines. So you have that commonality too, and somebody to experience that with. And I will tell you when it comes to uh, experience wise, and I know Petty Officer Levette could say this too, you're doing the right thing by asking the questions to your sponsor. Uh, because yeah, uh, sometimes it's, it's hard for people to say, hey, this is exactly what you need. And yep. this is how many of them. And the best place to get that information is asking other sailors. Uh, hey man, like what, what do you, you know, what do you, what did you end up getting when you got here or did you go out and buy and what do you wish you would have had, you know, and if anybody's out there and has been to Yakuska, Japan, or, um, understands the carrier life a little bit more than I do, obviously, Petty Officer Levex talked to him, feel free to comment down below because, uh, Airman Haggerty is still going to be able to obviously like get on here and see the comments. And if you have any suggestions for him uh, that you were like, man, I wish I would have brought that or known that about Japan, like put him down there. Trust me, mm -hmm. he will appreciate it. Uh, and while you're commenting, make sure you smash that like button and share this feed. Find your like, share, follow. Well, uh, Haggard, you're going to stay with us now because we're about to go into our bonus content. Okay. All right, bonus content starts in three, two. What's up, YouTube, our special, special community? You were just behind the helm. What does that mean? You're here on YouTube. What do you do now? The show's over. Is it, though? Why don't you go ahead and click this video below and watch that bonus content that we're always talking about. It's right here. You don't have much time. I'm going to give you five more seconds.